so good to see all of you. You're so welcome to be here. Um, I, I have a few uh, announcements just quickly so that uh, we can talk about that. The first thing I want to do is I want to make sure about the time. I've spoken to some of you already, but now some came in a bit later. Um, we want to uh, maybe have the English service a bit earlier at half past ten. Would that be fine? And then you come along um, just after ten and come and have tea with the others. So the whole idea is that we can do, bring the two services together and have the people meet each other, mingle with each other. Um, and there's nice tea and cookies every time, okay? <laughs> so you're welcome for the good tea and cookies. All right. And then we start the service at, at uh, half past ten. Uh, yes. Uh, we still have this one remnant from uh, the COVID, and that is that we do the tithing at the door. <laughs> so, uh, um, and then what we do is we just say thank you to the Lord for the for the offering. So, uh, uh, please come forward now. Let's, let's just uh, thank the Lord for it. Lord, thank you that when we bring an offering, Lord, um, we are allowed to do that. Lord, when we bring the offering, it's, it's not as if we want to find favor with you. We realize that we are only here by your grace. And Lord, we know what you've done for us. And in a way, we want to thank you. So this offering, Lord, is, is a thanksgiving. And we bring it to you, Lord. I know we owe much more. You've given us your all. Please bless us now, Lord. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Um, the few announcements, uh, the one is the, the one about the time, and uh, then we have some uh, things happening in our church that I thought I could invite you to. Um, the one is a golf day that we have on the 15th of uh, October at the Shelly Point Golf Club. So you can come and uh, play golf with us if you want to. Um, if not, you can, uh, uh, there's some steak uh, dinner to, that you can order for yourself, it's a hundred grand each, and then uh, also you could uh, donate and uh, sponsor one of the holes or one of the, one of the tees and, uh, if you want to, okay? Um, so that's on the 15th of October, and then we have a dance, if you want to dance. Um, we have some young, some of the children at, uh, in my catechism class, they decided they're going to organize this dance, and I said to them, fine, use the church hall. Now I know in the old days they wouldn't, they wouldn't allow that, but anyway. <laughs> so uh, we have that on the 30th of September, uh, a dance, and then on the, uh, I must get this date right. Um, oh yes, on the 8th of October, we have a, a ladies' morning tea, a high tea thing, and uh, you are welcome to that as well. Uh, you can just speak to Milani at the church office on how to, how to come there. Uh, to enjoy that. All right. So those are the announcements, and uh, for the rest, we ask for your prayers. There's many people who suffer in our co uh, community. Think of those as well, please. We are going to sing a few hymns, and then we'll start off with the service. Thank you.
that you have mercy upon us. We want to thank you, Lord, that you died on the cross for us and paid for all our transgressions. And that you freed us from death and given us everlasting life. That you freed us from guilt. That we can live, live abundantly. Thank you, Lord, that we could come together in this, in this church this morning and that we can worship together. Thank, the, thank you, Lord, that you make us part of your body, your church. And as we sit here, Lord, I pray that you would fill our hearts with your spirit and that you would give us this love for each other and for the world around us. Lord, I pray that you would that we, you would let us rest in you. Calm us down, Lord, from this rushing world that we are part of. Lord, open our ears, and I pray, Lord, that you would let your message enter. As we read from the Bible, that we will hear your voice, and that would guide us and give us direction. I pray, Lord, that you would bless us now as we turn to your word and as we listen to you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's hear another hymn and then we will read from Acts number 15.
You can turn in the Bible, if you have one here, to Acts chapter 15, verse 1 to 12, we will read. It's all about the council in Jerusalem. Acts chapter 15, from verse 1 to 12. Let's hear the word of the Lord. Some men came down from Judea to Antioch and were teaching the brothers, Unless you are circumcised according to the custom taught by Moses, you cannot be saved. This brought Paul and Barnabas into sharp dispute and debate with them. And so Paul and Barnabas were appointed, along with some other believers, to go up to Jerusalem to see the apostles and elders about this question. The church sent them on their way, and as they traveled through Phoenicia and uh, Samaria, they told how the Gentiles had been converted. This news made all the brothers very glad. When they came to Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church, and the apostles and elders, to whom they reported everything God had done through them. Then some of the believers who belonged to the party of the Pharisees stood up and said, The Gentiles must be circumcised and required to obey the law of Moses. The apostles and elders met to consider this question. And after much discussion, Peter got up and addressed them. Brothers, you know that some time ago God made a choice among you that the Gentiles might hear from my lips the message of the Gospel and believe. God, who knows the heart, showed that He accepted them by giving the Holy Spirit to them, just as He did to us. He made no distinction between us and them, for He purified their hearts by faith. Now. Then, why do you try to test God by putting on the necks of the disciples a yoke that neither we nor our fathers have been able to bear? No, we believe it is through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that we are saved, just as they are. The whole assembly became silent as they listened to Barnabas and Paul, telling about the miraculous signs and wonders God had done among the Gentiles through them. We will read up to there. The church has been known as a place where people quarrel and where we have lots of disputes. And uh, you see that in every community with all the different churches and uh, people quarreling and, and uh, disparity amongst people, amongst the churches. And uh, there's always the side issues that we have that we complain about. And it's even true in this church. It's even true of the Dutch Reformed Church, the Anglican Church, the Methodist Church, the Roman Catholic Church, you name it, everywhere. And uh, even every Pentecostal church and every charismatic church you will find it. People quarreling within the church um, on what is right and what is wrong, and especially on the structures of the church. There's lots of disputes on that. Um, you know, the elders and uh, how the building should be, and all of those little, niche little things. And it tires one out, it tires me out personally as well, now, even here in St. Helena Bay. Um, and I think it's a problem that we have lost track of what the church is actually about. The church has become like little clubs where we set up, we, we go to the church we like, you know, <laughs> the one we like, and that's the one that suits us in terms of um, how it's set up, you know. Um, but we've lost track of what the church is actually about. 
the core business of the church. Now this morning's uh, teaching is all about the core business of church. What, it's, what is it actually about? Now in verse 1, um, it, it says, it tells the story of these people that came from, from Judea to Antioch and wanted the new converts into the church to adhere to the laws of Moses. And they want them to be circumcised. And they want these customs to be applied to these people as well. Now, you know, uh, you, you probably know what circumcision is. I, I really don't want to explain it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure these guys wouldn't want to have that done to them either. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so these people were sort of confronted with this now. Now, why is this so important? Why is this so so important that uh, it can keep us out of church? We're not allowed in the church un un unless this happens to us, uh, and we have to adhere to all these things. And we find that in all kinds of church things that today as well, that there's sort of prerequisites. That you need to have before you can be part of the church. Um, you have to have a white tie and a black suit to be an elder in the church. You know? <laughs> Stuff like that. It became so important, all these side issues, that it, it, it caused um, chisms amongst the people um, and caused people to veer away from church. You can go out here. And you can walk down the street in St. Helena Bay and ask the people about coming to the church. And they'll tell you, we are believers, but we don't want to be part of this institutionalized system that sort of judges us of whether we wear a white tie or a suit or whatever. <laughs> it became so important, this little side issue. And that's what happened in, in Acts. 15 chapter, verse 1. These people wanted these issues to be important. Um, and they ended up in a big quarrel with uh, Paul uh, and Barnabas. And then they decided, well, we will have to take this issue to uh, the elders and the apostles in, in Jerusalem. Actually, Paul and Barnabas knew that behind this side issue of being circumcised was the hardcore Jewish people who did not want the Gentiles to be part of the church. Behind it, there's always this agenda. And I find it in our church as well, and in most churches, there's an agenda. And it's always about some people that they want to get at and that they want to get out of the church, that they don't like. We've had trouble with that in the church in South Africa for many years. And we find that in every church all, all around the world. I've been all around the world with all kinds of church things. And I'm telling you, it's everywhere like that. People see the church as their club. This is our place. So we put up our burglar bars around it. This is our place. And we take, we take ownership of the church instead of letting God be the owner. So what they then did is they decided to go to the council in Jerusalem. Now I know in our church, that's, this is a big thing. We always have these um, uh, presbytery councils and the synodical councils. And then the duomi normally goes, that's me, and uh, an elder. And we have to go to this meetings, and it's long, boring meetings about white ties and stuff. Okay, so uh, we look up to it going, but uh, for the the congregation, it's normally a wonderful thing. They sending their representatives to go and hear what what we should do, and then they're packing some food and everything, and then we off we go to this long meeting that we're going to have. Now, in the Dutch Reformed Church, we have it here at Gudini which is close to uh, Worcester, 
and uh, it's normally a whole week long thing, the synodical council. And uh, in the beginning, it's very nice. You will see that uh, uh, Paul and the, the elders that went there, they, uh, they were on the way and they told everyone how wonderful their church is and it's been growing and the good Lord has been good to us. And then when they get there, they are welcomed and it's so nice to see everyone. I know it's like that for me too when I come there because I know everyone and we've been at, at seminary together so it's lovely to see everyone again. But there's this elephant in the room. Always. This, on which side are you on the issue? You know? <laughs> um, I know we've had all these kinds of issues that in the last few synodical meetings um, about the Balar confession, about the gay issue, and, and so on. And, but there's always this elephant in the room which, which sort of creates separation amongst us. And I always see when, when we are not united, I always see the hand of, of uh, the evil one in this, trying to separate us. So this is what happened here as well. So they came to this synodical meeting, and obviously there were some old people there who said uh, they were from the Pharisees, and they said, these guys should be circumcised. And they should, uh, you know, uh, uh, adhere to the laws of Moses, all these new Gentiles. You hear that uh, conservative pull that you always have within the church. And you find that amongst these people as well. The Bible says here in verse 6 and 7 that they had a long meeting. Now that's very true of synodical meetings. It's long. And it's a hefty um, discussion. So it takes long. Um, I know that the Senate of Dort, in, in Dortrecht in, uh, in Germany, was, uh, if I'm correct, I think it was two years long that they sat there <laughs> and discussed this very issue. What saves you? What saves you? Is it when you are circumcised, if you are part of the Jewish tradition? What saves you? It was this very issue. And I think most synodical meetings and church meetings is about the same thing. What actually saves you? What is actually the thing that the church is about? What is the core business of the church? You know what I mean by core business? If you have a pharmacy nowadays, you will find if you go into the pharmacy, it's supposed to sell medicine. That's the core business. But most pharmacies nowadays, when you go in, you can buy chocolates and all kinds of chips and stuff, which is not medicine. And eventually, um, their business becomes a shop for chips and chocolates and you don't find any medicine there because they lost track of the core business. Now the church, what is the core business of the church? What do we have to do to be part of the church? What is it that makes you part of the church? Now after this long discussion, Peter stood up. Now Peter was seen as a father figure in the church in those days. So when he stood up, people listened. And I want you to listen now too. When Peter speaks. Because this is the core what church is all about. I don't want you to miss out on this. So in verse 7 he says about the Gentiles and he hits the nail on the head because he knows this is what it's actually about. Their complaint. He knows this is the elephant in the room. He said about the Gentiles, I'm the first who went to preach to them. Remember the story about the, the um, the sheep that came down with all the animals in it uh, to Peter to show him that the, the gospel was for everyone. Peter was the first and he stood up and he said, well if you want to go against them you have to come through me. <laughs> because I'm the first one who preached to the Gentiles. I'm the first one who brought them the gospel. 
Now he uses this word evangelion, the word for gospel in Greek, which means good news. Not telling them to be circumcised. I mean, that's not good news. <laughs> he brought them the good news. The good news of the gospel. That God, the Almighty God, loved them so that He died for them on the cross and He paid for their transgressions and He's given them everlasting life for everyone. For everyone. He did that. He brought them the Evangelion, the good news. And then in verse 8 he says, And then God came through His Spirit, and for their Spirit made, made them believers. Because you must understand one thing this morning, and that is that you don't decide to believe. It's not your decision. God shows up to you and you believe. Okay. He makes you believe through His Spirit. He shows up in your life. He presents Himself. I mean, I know that Karine sits up front here. I can see her. I meet her. I know her. She presented herself today. She's right here. I can believe that Karim is in the church. And the same with God. God showed up in your life. I know that He's here. I've met Him here. He's here. The Spirit of the Lord then came and into these people and gave them the faith. And now He says a very important thing because addressing the issue, He said, there's no distinction. Between Jew and Gentile, yeah. <laughs> There's no distinction. God doesn't make distinction. When He dies on the cross, He dies for everyone on this planet Earth. <laughs> he loves you all. There's no distinction. When He presents Himself, He does it to whomever He wants. You go and you tell them. You go and bring the gospel. The good news. There's no distinction. But there's some weight in this that you must hear this morning. There's some power that's stronger than just the words of Peter. And listen to what Peter says um, uh, when you read in, in verse 10. In verse 10 he says, now I must put on my glasses to show to read it for you. He says, Now then, why do you try to test God by putting on the necks of the disciples a yoke that neither you or your fathers could bear? Why do you test God? You see, when we come with the side issues, Especially if we do it with an agenda to get someone out of the church. You are not dealing with people here. You are dealing with God. You are dealing with Him. The Almighty God. Do you hear the power, the weight of this? It is the highest authority speaking here. Why do you test God? By doing this. By shutting people out. Why do you test Him? You are dealing with God. The Almighty God. And then verse 11 comes. And uh, if you know a little bit about the Greek. And the language of, of Greece. Um, it uh, will come to you in the vocative. This verse. Which is, it's being shouted. It's high volume. Um, no, he says. We are only saved, everyone is only saved by the grace of God. And brothers and sisters, this is the core of the church. The grace of God. 
We are here solely by His grace. Nothing, nothing that we can do can earn us this right. None of these side issues of being circumcised, baptized, how many water, speaking in tongues, all those kind of things that we, that we quarrel about. None of that is important but the grace of God. We are here solely by His grace. Being saved by the grace of God is very important. I want you to hear this. It simply means that you are at His mercy. You understand what I'm saying? It simply means that if He is not merciful to you, you have no chance. God has given us His grace. He opened His arms and said, You may come. If He did not, you could be circumcised ten times, it could be that short. <laughs> wouldn't get you there. <laughs> it wouldn't get you there. <laughs> Yeah, it's solely by the grace of God. <laughs> but there's something more about grace. If you are saved by grace, it means everyone else has a better chance than you have. You must hear this right. It simply means that everyone else, the Gentiles included, have a better chance of being saved. <laughs> um, than you have. Because the moment you think that you are ahead of some Gentile or someone else, it means that you think you deserve it more. Then there's no grace anymore. Do you understand? So look at other people as people to whom God has been more graceful. And you are here at the back of the queue. Every one of us, we hear at the back of the key, solely by the grace of God. Solely that. And then, verse 12 says, everyone was quiet. All the quarreling stopped. Because we got rid of all the chocolates and chips and stuff in the shop. And we're back to core business. <laughs> And the church can go on. And that's exactly what happened. They started telling their stories of how wonderful the Lord is for us. And how He's bestowed His grace on so many people. And the wonders that He's done. It's as if the ship got back on course. And got the compass right. We are here by the grace of God. Let's thank Him for that. Let's close our eyes. Lord, we are here by your grace. And Lord, each and every one is like that here. And I thank you for that, Lord. Yes, there's nothing that we've done that can ever deserve being your child. Thank you that you call us your children, that you've opened your arms, that you love us, and that you care for us, and that you've saved us and given us everlasting life. And Lord, now we want to tell it. We want to bring this good news and tell it to everyone how you are blessing us with your grace. To you be the glory, Lord. There's no one like you. There's no one we can compare you to. You are amazing, Lord. And we want to worship you and bring you all the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. It's also awesome band to sing us a song about grace. Okay.
Thank you. 